we've ever only ever known him as he's grown up. We've everybody has seen him who's a blues fan, seen him from the go through the academy, come as a young kid to where he is today. And often when that happens, we we miss how good a player he is. Welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And we're coming back today with another unscripted video. And as you know, me and Dad, we like to do these every week, every other week really, just about what's going on at the club. Maybe there's been a transfer, maybe there's been some news, some stadium upgrades, whatever it might be. And we like to unplan these and just sort of go for it in the room and see what comes out really. So Dad, unscripted video. However, I did see something on social media this morning I want to bounce uh, off you and that was... At the time of recording, on this day in 1999, we signed Stan Lazaridis. Do you, yeah. remember, do you remember Stan Lazaridis? I remember Stan Lazaridis. Yeah, uh, what a great player he was. Um, yeah, fantastic player for us. I, I saw that as well, by the way. Yeah. Uh, always liked Stan Lazaridis. He, you know, he was very uh, a fast and tricky little player. He was. Uh, always good supply line as well. Uh, I think yeah. he was very well respected. I think we did we get him from West Ham or something like that. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, uh, but so yeah, I saw that. I, I like seeing those little memories. Then you know, when we see like, somebody's birthday today or this or in this yeah, day yeah. we signed them. Yeah. Uh, but he 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 particular. You must remember him because I used oh, to I take. Love, I, I love Stan Lazaridis. Yeah. Uh, when I was a young when I was a young kid, I used to play left back and left mid, depending mm. on whether it was a school team or my club team, whatever. I was. Pretty versatile on the left hand side and my two idols for Birmingham City during that generation was Martin Granger as a left back yeah, yeah. and Stan Lazaridis on the left wing they, yeah. they were my two sort of idols during that era and two very different players Granger big challenges stuck in yeah, yeah. free kick maestro and Lazaridis was just he was kind of like that player you know those players that just glide past players yeah. effortlessly yeah. And, could, and, could, and had a goal in him as well I mean he scored against the Villa he did that Rocket, uh, I saw the clip which was attached to that announcement this morning. It was that rocket across the keeper? I can't, Charlton, maybe at home, I can't remember exactly. Really good player, and I just wanted to get that in that we signed Lazarides yeah, in 1999. Yeah. No, no, great memories, great, great memories. And uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we're, we're at that stage of the season now where we are not far away from the first game against Reading. So, I just want to get your thoughts really on uh, what you think about pre season so far. So, pre season for me has been really interesting. Obviously, it started with that Paderborn game, and everyone felt like on social media they were losing their minds and I think we had to ground ourselves that that was just getting minutes in the legs, lots of youngsters. But as we've progressively gone through, Dad, I don't know about you, I've been so impressed with what I've been seeing, you know, Chris Davis's style of football. I mean, the first 60 minutes against Rangers, that was like, it almost felt wrong watching watching Blues play that style of football. It's like, yeah. what is going on? I haven't yeah. seen this borderline ever in my lifetime, that style of football. A lot of the transfers of, you know, Hansen's been borderline, I think is going to be one of my favourite players. Coming back to that thing, that yeah. me being a left-hand sided player, yeah. I have a soft spot for those sorts of players. So I've been so impressed. And, you know, when you look at the Rangers game, fast, dynamic, we absolutely dominated for that first 60 minutes. And even if you look at the Warsaw game, Warsaw are a lot closer to the style of opponents that we're going to be playing yeah. this season. And they were compact. They were set up well. We had to have patience. We had to sort of adapt our strategy as we went through. And we still managed to break through and get that goal. And it was interesting to see Blues show patience, uh, show composure, and, and, and of course still get that win. So lots of different style of game, style of football, style of play, just in terms of opponents here. But I've been well impressed with what I've been watching and seeing. How about yourself? A yeah, complete change, isn't it? You know, watching yeah. the style of football. It, I, and I totally agree with your point. It's, like, it's not like watching Birmingham City because it's a completely different style of play. Um, I think out of all the games, obviously the Rangers game was fantastic in terms of, particularly as you mentioned, the first hour. Oh, unbelievable. Um, and then obviously then he made all the changes and I think they got a goal and uh, he was, you know... There's nine changes, weren't he? I think yeah, it was. But, it was a lot but, of changes. But, but that's, that's what pre-season's yeah, about. Yeah, sure. uh, but I think the game that they, he would have learned the most from is Warsaw yeah. uh, because, as you say, it's very much closer to the type and style of opponents that we're going to get. Um, and we are going to find teams in League One, Dad, that are hard to break down. There's no doubt about it. They're experienced at this level. They know how to park, park the bus. They know how to annoy you. They know how to bully you. They know how to get under your skin. And yeah. we're going to have to show patience and composure. Yeah. And I think we did that pretty well against Warsaw. So that, for me, was my favourite friendly in the context of it gave me a true representation of the kind of teams we're going to be playing next season. Yeah, very it, very as close. It, I think, as you know, on that day as well, there was a, a split squad. So half went to Warsaw, half went to Aldershot, and uh, the teams were mixed. And uh, I do feel that the uh, starting lineup against Warsaw is closer to the it was. Uh, players that he, Chris Davis is probably going to be utilising as mm -hmm. first team selection. So in Aldershot, at Aldershot, we had um, Alsop was playing, mm -hmm. uh, Clara was playing, Hanson was playing as well. Uh, and I think that's because he wanted to give Dembele a chance against uh, against Warsaw. Jukovic, obviously, Keshi Anderson. So there's a decent... Good players up there, but I think I think the preseason's gone well so far. It's given Blues fans um, a flavour of what 
it's to come in terms of the different type and style of play. Um, and I think it's all looking positive, but it still shows us that uh, we're not quite there yet. Mm-hmm. There's lots of areas that we need to improve on, maybe other players we need to bring in. But I think it's been very, very positive in terms of what and how Chris Davis and the team have, uh, you know, taken the preseason and uh, and started to develop us, uh, and also it's all about fitness as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think my biggest alarm bell in my mind at the moment, Dad, and you've spoke about this quite a lot recently, is the right hand side. So when you look at Laird, you look at Paik in the right side of the centre mid, and you look at Miyashi in the right wing. I mean, it's too lightweight. It's too lightweight, isn't it? We we yeah. need more physicality yeah. on yeah, that totally, right hand side. Totally, totally, uh, absolutely, a hundred percent. Because if we uh, come up against a tall physical team, which there's a lot of them in League One, that right hand side, even though it might be tricky and fast, it's small. Mm-hmm. And, so if you, if you come up against a left hand side with a player six foot one, six foot two and above, yeah. we're going to struggle because yeah. they're going to be physically out out strengthening our players. I think League One's going to be physical anyway, is, yeah. but but you know we do need some strengthening on that right hand side for sure because it's mm-hmm. okay having fast tricky players and that's great, but you've got to have players that can stand up as well. Yeah. I, I, I felt as well uh, from what I've seen against Warsaw, I think they pushed us around a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, they were well set up. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was I think they're, they're they're going to do well this season, Warsaw. Yeah. I think from what I've seen, but. Regardless, you know, let's not talk about them. But I think, think that you know, I sometimes think we were pushed off the ball a little bit too mm-hmm. easily. Uh, although we had a lot of possession, so you know, there's some really but, positive things to take against Warsaw. But that's but, what preseason is about. Yeah, but I mean, but my point in mentioning Warsaw, I think it's valid. Is we're going to get teams which are very well set up, exactly yeah. like they were. They've done their research, they've done their homework. They were compact. They were hard to break down. We're going to find teams like that on the road and at home this season. Where I think we're going to get a lot of frustration. There's going to be a lot of, lot of games, particularly St Andrews. They're literally going to come and just set up to part the ball. Mm-hmm. I mean that's a real common term, isn't it? I think, and that's going to be a lot, sometimes. I think as Blues fans, we're going to have to be patient mm-hmm. because we're not going to walk over teams in this league. Yeah. Every team in the league will, you know, have have tough fixtures against other teams as well. But you tell me a team in any any season that uh, has walked a league. I mean, yeah, there might be some historically where teams have actually walked it, but you yeah, know, look at Leicester in the Championship last season. Started off like a steam train. Everyone thought they were going to break the points record, but then they went through patches where they lost a few games, you know, and uh, drawing games. And we're going to get that in League One. Regardless of whether we like it or not, we're going to drop points yeah. in and, League One. And we might get off to a slower start than we expect, and there's no need to press the panic button. Look at the teams that came down last season, Southampton and Leeds in the Championship. They struggled for the first couple of games. Then they got settled, they got used used to playing at this level again and they started to pick up points. I mean, Southampton went on an absolute bonkers one at one point, didn't they? And Leeds were Leeds, you know, they did really good. So my point is, if we do start the season a little bit slow, I don't think we will, by the way, this isn't me saying that we will, but if we did, it's okay to have an adapt an a- adaptation period where we're just getting used to League One and we're finding our feet. And as you say, Dad, it's a different league. It's more physical. Teams are going to park the bus. They're going to be more difficult to break down. Long balls, crosses in the box, all these different things. And this is why we bang that drum about physicality. But for me, I think the right man's in charge. I'm seeing his style of football now really come to fruition, which is really great to see. And I think we'll be absolutely fine. I, I genuinely still think we'll, we'll bag one of the promotion places. Um, but I think watching that Warsaw game really hit home to me the kind of football we're going to have to get used to at the League One level. I know Warsaw are in League Two, but they're still, out of all the pre-season friendlies, going to be a lot closer aligned to mm. the style and uh, teams that we're going to play be playing in League One. So yeah. um, that was an eye-opener. It was interesting to watch. I still think we'll be absolutely fine. I really do. And I'm excited to see Chris Davis's style of football um, come to action. Yeah, so that's pre-season. So pre-season, obviously, I'm looking forward to the Albion game. I know you can't make as you're on holiday with your family again. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> but uh, I will be at the Albion game and I'm looking forward to that because obviously that's our last pre-season friendly and of course in uh, the week after our first home yeah, game against the, the Reading so that'd be really good yeah. and uh, since... just just coming back to the game against Reading are you excited to get a, a pint of uh, Chris, Chris Campo in yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw the menu uh, yeah, oh, the beer looks a lot better and neck oil yeah. but I, don't, I don't know whether I've pronounced that right Chris Campo I think I've pronounced it right uh, but they, that's the the fancy beer on tap we've got neck oil there's a couple of yeah, more yeah well I, I'm not going to drink the sign that's all I saw so, <laughs> uh, so obviously I'm going to taste the beer itself but uh, it does look like they've got some nice little varieties there yeah. so I'm quite looking at it you know round about the same prices as uh, we were paying it's funny that, that they've done prime pricing so an hour and a half before kickoff it's 5 50 and then in that hour and a half before kickoff it goes up to I think it might be six pounds six pound fifty so oh, okay. they, 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 do up, early. they do up the prices the closer to kickoff you get so oh interesting um, oh, okay okay so we'll be in the ground early then yeah, we'll be in there uh, at twelve o'clock <laughs> uh, some, some, something else I wanted to uh, you know just uh, touch on as well is is JJ uh, yeah. in terms of we obviously still speculated it could leave we've offered him a new contract any thoughts on, on, on how you feel about that so uh, it, JJ's an interesting one because he's always been the one who's had the most speculation around him and you know in January at 
Atalanta were circling. I read this week Ipswich are circling. And there's no doubt with Jordan James' age, his ability, the Premier League would definitely be tempting. But, um, you know, how much first-team football is he really going to get at the Premier League level? And we've spoken before, Dad, about the positivity around this club, the moves we're making, the players we're buying, the momentum we have now under Chris Davis and the new owners. I think he'd be mad to leave, but I don't know what's going on in JJ's head. I don't know what's in his mind. I would love for him to stay because I feel like he feels a lot more settled in that centre-mid position, especially under Chris Davis' style of football. Um, but, you know, money talks in football, doesn't it? I think he's um, a player that uh, is is good and getting better. And I'd love him to stay. I think in pre-season, he's been one of the standouts for me in terms of, you know, what he's done, his progression, his aggression. You know, and I think I think with Blues fans as well, it's, it's a bit of a mixed feeling because we've ever, only ever known him as he's grown up. We've Everybody has seen him as a Blues fan, seen him from the go through the academy, come as a young kid to where he is today. And often when that happens, we, we miss how good a player is because my argument would be if JJ was a player that played for another team, wouldn't you be happy if Blues went after him? But he's already here yeah. for now. So I, I it's like, um, you know, you, you sort of almost like because he's already been here a long time, you miss how mm. good he is because all we've ever remembered is that young, scrawny little player who came on. He was when he first came on. Uh, but I think uh, he's been outstanding in pre-season. I think he's shown us aggression. He's created chances. I'd, I'd love to keep him. I hope we keep him. Well, we, 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 if we're going to put our hands up, Dad, in the interest of honesty on this podcast, we labelled him last year as possibly slightly overrated. I, th- I, th- I think, Do I think, you think he's now shrugging off that reputation? No, I, I, think, I think that at the time, that was correct because that was the time in January he got that interest from Atalanta and his form dipped mm. so he just almost like lost interest a little bit or, or, or wasn't, or his mind wasn't on the game so I think maybe at the time that probably was correct yeah. but I think he's got better I think I think being a full international for Wales has made him a best, better player because yeah. he's playing and he's playing players. in the position he was designed to play yeah. he's not playing right wing left wing that's uh, another and, thing and as well yeah. he's a centre yeah. midfielder simple yeah. as that you do not play JJ on the right or the left yeah. and when you do that I think we we have said, you know, he's a very good player in the centre mid position. And I'm like you, I don't want to see him go. I think he's a good player. I'd like to see him sign a new contract or at least stay. And um, I really hope he sees the direction this club is moving in and wants to stay and be on that journey with us. I, I, I hope we keep him. Mm. I really do. And as I say, I think he will continue to develop and he will be a really massive player for us over the next few years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens. Same with Paik, you know. Um, yeah. He has been offered a new contract. Whether he signs it, yeah, we'll actually have to see, but it'd be good to keep him as yeah. well as well. Uh, so, final, uh, I've got a question for you then. So, at the minute, we've got Alfie May up front. We all know that we're light in the striker department. Any thoughts on who you'd like to see come in, or or how many do you think we need in that area to strengthen our squad? Just in terms of depth, you know, club games, cup games, suspensions, injuries. How many strikers do you think we need to get through the door before the transfer window? Two. At two least, more, two at least, and um, I think there need to be different types of strikers as well. We need a big, tall, bulky striker we, we use this word a lot mad don't we physical because we lack physicality but we do need a, a tall striker so I think Ugbo from who, yeah, was, on, who, who was on loan at um, Sheffield Wednesday he's at Triers isn't it from mm. a French team um, he's been mooted as a possibility but you know you don't know do you with these yeah. things but he's he he scored against us and he's just like a lump and he, he you know is, yeah. but you'd, sometimes you need players like that to just just Break basically yeah well just Barrett the goal, you know, yeah, yeah. just to just to put some pressure on the goalkeeper, or, or you know, I mean, obviously Sansfield has been also heavily speculated at possible, but yeah. um, I mean, but, but I just want to clarify as well by by mentioning that we need a physical striker, a tall striker. That doesn't mean we're going back to the old school style of football where you lump it up and hope for the best. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying you need more tools in your arsenal to break defenses down and a little bit of variety, don't you? So you could have a fast, nippy striker who goes in round the back, a bit like a Stansfield, but that might not work against every team. Sometimes you need a bit more of an aerial. Threat. Sometimes you need that physicality to well, really you, you, give the centre halves a time. You need time, somebody so. up front that will compete with, with what will be tall physical centre halves. Exactly, yeah. So otherwise they just get pushed off the yeah, ball. Yeah. So I think we do need two strikers. Yeah, Jay Stansfield is he's, he's the romantic dream, isn't he? You know, of what Blues fans uh, want to see uh, come back. If that would happen, I think all Blues fans would be really happy. Um, it's mixed. Me included. Yeah, me too. And it's mixed in terms of what you see on social media. Sometimes, oh, he's, had a, he's having a medical. This is why I hate speculation. Yeah, yeah. And this is why on this channel, you know, we're never going to talk about a player in huge detail until they've actually been announced. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, we'd be doing videos every single day. And some you know, some media do that. And then nothing ever happens. And then yeah. it's, just, it's just pointless. Um, but he's been mentioned. Uh, Ugbo and you know, the club are looking far and wide, and we've already signed uh, players from uh, from Germany. 
um, you know, uh, Holland, um, places like that. So we could get somebody uh, who um, is further afield. But definitely we need a couple of strikers. Yeah. De- and Alfie May is a great, you know, he's a great asset to this club already in terms of what we can see. He's I doing think he's going to be fantastic. Uh, but but he's a turn, certain type of style of play. We can't have another player exactly like him because they're getting each other's way, won't mm. they? So, so we need somebody who has different characteristics to, to come. But we definitely need strikers. Mm-hmm. And we've got UK who's not going to play every game. Um, as a but obviously he's uh, he signed that uh, contract uh, to stay at the club. Um, Tyler Roberts, as you mentioned in previous videos, he's more of an attacking mm-hmm. midfielder, but you could use him as a striker. Uh, and of course, then we've got um, Junior Dixon, who doesn't look like he's going to be in the first team based upon what's happening in pre-season. We are short, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, and, and that's what I wanted to ask, just to get your thoughts on how many we'd need. I agree. I think we need another two to come in. Slightly different attributes and physicality, and I think I'll be a lot more settled knowing we have a bit more depth. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we possibly see a loan come in, maybe from Tottenham or, or you know, yeah, uh, yeah, possibly yeah. utilise the loan. Well, market. we've done a video on that. Uh, if you look at the, on the channel, Blues fans, I think it was uh, three or four weeks ago, we looked at some of the uh, Tottenham uh, yeah. youth players based upon the link with Chris Davies, who was at Tottenham before he came to yeah. Birmingham, and there's some good youngsters there. there are. And strikers are expensive, yeah. so yeah. that would be smart to utilise one yeah. loan. First, yeah. first striker. I've seen a speculation about a young lad from Fulham as well. Uh, not, not Stansfield. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Oh, I'm, I'm, I know, I, I know exactly yeah, who you mean, but yeah, I've forgotten his name. Yeah. As well. So, uh, so yeah, we do need strikers. Uh, something else that, um, that obviously that uh, is always on Blues uh, fans' minds is actually the ground. You know, what's going mm. on the ground? It's looking good from what I can see. It's looking good. Um, obviously, everything seems to be uh, ready. The, 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 there was problems with the ticketing for. Um, the but that Rangers wasn't going... that wasn't the turnstiles. That was that that was people not having the QR code or the ticket properly in their phone. They had it on the email, not in the uh, proper format to get you through the gate. So people yeah. were struggling to shuffle through because people were going, what's everyone's problem? I just got I just got through in five seconds. You just need to scan the, the code properly. So a few teething problems for sure um, because they, they they delayed the Rangers kickoff by 15 minutes. And, they, and, and at that time, Q's, Q's there, was still, there was still a, a couple of hundred outside the ground. They've got, so. they've got to get that sorted out. But I've, I've heard um, people having trouble getting through to the ticket office as well. This is not at the Rangers game. This is literally, they can't get through to the ticket office. Or when they do, they get sort of error messages. And, and you know, and apparently they've changed the ticketing now so that if you want to get a ticket for a game, you've got to have a, a registered an ID. An ID number. Um, yeah, fine. It's okay giving people to have ID numbers, but uh, if you want to sell tickets in mass, particularly for friendlies yeah. and stuff like that, is that the best road uh, road to go down? I don't know. I mean, but they seem to be doing everything right, so I'm not, I'm not going to criticize mean, the club. The but... ID works great for people like me and you who are gold away members, so all of our information is logged in that five digit number. But if you're just a casual supporter who wants to go down for one or two games a season, you have to get an ID, yeah, make an account. Yeah. That's, that's to, my point. You have to remember it. You, you, could, like... you could potentially put people off going. Yeah. Because, you know, and you can apparently you can only get one ticket per idea yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. so th- that needs to be sorted out as well because you know the, if you w- want to sell out games and you want to sell tickets fast you don't put obstacles in the way like this it's ridiculous and I do wonder how many um, people decided not to go to Rangers because I know there was, there was about 19,000 in there but 7,000 were Rangers fans actually how many people couldn't you know just gave up because they was in a massive queue or they kept getting logged out and all the things that I've been hearing so Birmingham City if anybody's watching that please get the, the uh, online um, ticketing sorted out because you know Blues fans next season are going to want to buy tickets also, and buy them quickly also Dad how many people have come up to us at the stadium and said I love your channel but I don't comment on it because I'm a bit of a technophobe so if you start putting QR codes and ID numbers you're going to isolate a lot and this is no disrespect this is just a lot of the older audience yeah, uh, who, yeah. uh, fan base who can't use technology as well as possibly arguably the younger fan base. So you're just going to frustrate the fan base by putting too many obstacles of QR codes and ID numbers and logins. I get and why the club are doing it. Though. I get it. They're, 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 they're doing it because obviously getting the contact details of people. So obviously then they're on the Marketing circulation list. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I do yeah. get why the club are doing it, but it could be counterproductive if you're putting people off buying tickets and mm. other things. So uh, basically Birmingham City, get that sorted out. Yeah. And mm. it works well for automations, yeah. you know, for away tickets and, and all these different areas so, that, so the club automatically know what member you are and all this. So it has its perks, it has its uh, usability, but don't isolate the fan base by making things too difficult. Yeah, but, but back to the ground as well, you know, the sound system seems to be uh, yeah. much better. 
yeah, best uh, in Europe, apparently, yeah, is what I've been hearing. Yeah, um, they're, they're building a, a DJ platform somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is in the ground to try and sort of get the atmosphere yeah. around. Are you, to, are you ready for your set? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I've just got my... Uh, uh, I'm just working through my playlist at the moment. Yeah. Uh, like, Dad does a half DJ, half stand-up comedy routine, don't you? Well, yeah, yeah. So if you are uh, going down to the blues on a regular basis, just be prepared. Well, <laughs> not really. I'll be, I'll be sat in my seat like everybody else, but uh, I just hope the DJ is like uh, half decent and not, uh, yeah. not, not sort of wedding singer type style. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at least we'll be able to hear him this time. Like, like last season, Dad, how many times have you been? You go, what song is this? Oh, we, could, we couldn't even hear the music. Yeah, I was just, everybody knows that. I think the Wi-Fi, I believe, will be com- absolutely completed yeah, by the end of August. They've I think. got they've got put, um, like uh, routers now hanging down from the ceiling because that that was one of my things. You know, I remember against the Norwich game last game of the season, all of us were trying to check our phones and we couldn't get I mean, internet. It was oh, a nightmare. Yeah, I know, it's, it's crazy. It was hit yeah. and miss, wasn't it? Best of, uh, and also as well, you see the new Awake kit. Mm. What do you think? I love it. Yeah, I love it. I think my only thing is they've done. The kit's white. They've done the undefeated in green and the Nike logo in green, but they've done the, the Blues logo in blue and white. I would have liked to have seen the Blues logo in the green that matches the rest of the the rest of the kit. I thought it was but... black and white. No, so the kit so the kit is white hmm. and the undefeated green. It's like a dark green. Oh, that's and, nice. And, and, the, uh, oh, and, okay. and the and and the Nike tick's green, but the Blues logo is like this, white and blue, and that to me looks a bit odd. However. I'm just being picky. I'm sure I'm just being picky here. Uh, but for me, I think it looks great. I love no, the white. It does look good. I like the contrast. I love it. The I love contrast it. of the colours. It's a very, very um, contrasting kit. I think it looks really, really good yeah. as well. So that surprised me as well. I was hoping we get a yellow one, but um, you love the yellow ones, don't I do. you? I do. I do. I do love the yellow ones. But uh, maybe that'll be one that we'll get in uh, yeah. on the third kit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I've always loved the black away kits. I think they look great. Uh, I got one right behind us in the studio from last season. But uh, yeah. yeah, love it. I think it's a great kit. And uh, yeah, I'm gearing up for that first game against yeah, Reading now. Yeah, and uh, one final thing as well is, uh, which is a point that everybody can see. I think we're the most hated fans on oh, social media word. at the moment, and uh, it's pouring out onto our channel a bit, isn't it? We're yeah. noticing a few comments come in saying, you know, yeah. our arrogant fan base and stuff. But yeah. again, we just want to hit this point home, don't we, Dad? It is banter. Yeah, it is. It's all it is. It's just as we've had a torrid 15 years. We've got good owners. I, we're I, buying, I also yeah. think as well, if I was a fan of another club, like a rival club, basically somebody in League One, and I saw another club spending all that money, uh, I'd be jealous. Yeah, same. I'd be je- and I think, I think I have been jealous yeah, for the past 15 and, and, and years. And fa- and fans clubs. will say, oh, no, no, we're not jealous and you're going to do yourselves an FFP and all this topic. But that's absolute rubbish. We're not. We're no problem with FFP mm. because of the way that the new regulations are. It's a percentage of your overall yeah, yeah. income, isn't it? And your, your salary and stuff like that. It's not the same as FFP. And our owners are not going to take us down the road where we're going to get to that. So, you know, a lot, a lot of other fans of other teams are saying some like really, like, you know, uh, things that show you that they're completely... Utterly don't understand the club, don't understand the fans, and uh, and they're just completely jealous. And that's yeah. pretty much what it is. And they say, I can't wait for you to lose games. We will lose games, and we're going to get barracked when we lose games. We'll drop points. Mm-hmm. We will drop points. But um, it's just the, you know, some fans are saying, oh, you know, you, you wait until you come to our ground and, you know, oh, you know, you think it's going to be easy. You're just waiting to get, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And, you know, if you think it's going to be easy, go and ask Sunderland and Ipswich mm. and Derby. And we know all that. Yeah, I know. I know. We know all that. But, you know, give us give us a break, will you, other fans? You know, we've had 15 years of absolutely rubbish owners that have put our club into complete decline. And finally, we get a set of owners that are willing to invest in our club and we're just enjoying it. Yeah. And if you don't like that, then sorry, that's that, yeah. that's, that's up to you but you I know we, 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 we have no malice against any other club yeah. and if you if it was your club if you're a fan of another club and it was your club you'd be enjoying it and doing exactly the things that our fans are actually do at the moment so our fans are known for the banter yeah yeah of course and, we yeah, are and so and a lot of it is that you get you get the odd idiot who puts something <laughs> absolutely crazy on there that you know because every fan's got you know people that uh, are over the top let's put yeah. it that way but but, but the vast majority of us Blues fans are absolutely down to earth and just want a bit yeah. of banter because you said they give us a break but some of the stuff I've been seeing on social from, from the Blues fans yeah. riling up the other fans it is absolutely mm. hilarious and it works every time mm. it's line sync every time they, mm. they bite they bite back every time mm. but I have seen a couple of comments on social media from Blues fans saying we know this isn't going to be easy we know League One's going to be tough it's just a joke it's just a bit of banter we're just enjoying the ride yep. of actually being favourites for once you know we've yeah. had a miserable 15 years haven't we after, after that cup win it literally went all downhill so we're just taking it in we're enjoying it and I for one in all seriousness I can't wait to go around the country and visit some of these League One stadiums see some of the fans yeah, and, me and too. I'm sure we're going to have some great banter back and forth on the terraces I, be, I always be, call it the terraces it will and, be amazing uh, it'll, it'll be, be amazing yeah uh, you know but uh, you know I think that's un- unavoidable because we have spent a lot of money yeah, the pressure's we, on yeah we are, we are going to be disliked by a lot of the clubs and there's nothing we can do about that um, so let's just get on with the season 
just enjoy it and then just see what happens at the end of the season. Everyone loves a good villain, don't they? Right? We're kind of the villain of the we are, to some extent. So we are. We are. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, I, that, that's interesting. Like everyone's kind of rooting for our demise, aren't they? And hoping, oh, yeah. and hoping they come to St Andrews and pick up some points. But yeah. um, I can't see that happening. I think St Andrews is going to be an absolute fortress this season. But yeah. um, that's yeah. it for me. Any, anything further? Anything no, else? No, no. That, that's it. Lots going on as always. Just looking forward to the start of the new season. And, uh, you know, I'm happy with everything that uh, the club are doing. So, yeah, it's all very positive for me. Absolutely. Yeah. So as Blues fans, we'd uh, as always, we'd love to hear from you. Please drop us a comment on your thoughts from what we've just discussed. Have we missed anything? Do you agree with some of our points? If you've got anything further to add, please drop us a comment and we'll get round to that as quickly as we possibly can. And if you like this video, please don't forget Sorry, please don't forget uh, to give us a thumbs up and you'll see our handles for our X page and our Instagram page popping on screen right now. So give us a check and a follow over there as well. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. And myself and dad will see you on the next video.